This is cool. Jessica Siegel, getting our technical difficulties all ironed out, everybody. Thank you for holding on with us. Making sure we are good to go because I got to get somebody else online to make sure we are. Hey, D. Am I on there? Of course, Bill is going to bark. How appropriate, given the topic. <laughs> <laughs> Just go to my YouTube page and see if it's on there, D. So can you see if you can see me. <laughs> is it live? Can you see me on there, D? Just go to my YouTube page. Do I need to send you a link? Just go to my page. Go to Chris. Go to Chris Haskins. It should be right there. You good to go? Okay. Thanks, D. Oh my God. Okay, guys. Hopefully, my uh, Billy will let us go. He didn't make up sound all day. <clears throat> Greetings, class. Chris Haskins with the Real Estate Roundup dot com, bringing you another flip tip. I am so thankful to have. God. I'm thankful to have Jessica Siegel with me once again for another training. <clears throat> Jessica, hey, everybody. Yeah. Good to be back. I'm excited for another great uh, little Q&A. Yeah, this is going to be cool. Let me bring it up so I can see people's questions. Guys, if you've got questions for Jessica, she is an attorney in New York. She has been an attorney for 18 years, and I am learning a lot just by rubbing shoulders with her. I firmly believe that iron sharpens iron. And you need to surround yourself with people that are smarter and have like like thinking like you do. Our mission to uplift the financial literacy of our fellow mankind through real estate investing and entrepreneurship. Today, Jessica is representing a client that she's going to explain to us about that has a client that has a dog bite from a tenant. And it's going to be some the story, the backstory about the landlord tenant issue. And Jessica, oh, before we get rolling, guys, if you like the content, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can see the link below. Just subscribe to our channel and share the content with your friends. Like the content if it's something that we can pour into your souls. Jessica, tell me about the story on this owner getting sued for a tenant's dog bite. All right, Chris. So tonight we're going to talk a little bit about uh, dogs and property ownership. And I mean, it can apply really to other animals, but we're kind of going to focus on dog bites tonight because we see those the most. Yes. Um, so what I see uh, often is specifically land, obviously landowners, property owners, but typically I deal with landlords and they will rent out their property. And the landlord is concerned that if somebody gets injured on his property by an animal, he could be held responsible. So in the state of New York, as it is in most states, but obviously if you're out in New York, you want to make sure you consult with an attorney in your state. But yeah. in New York, the landlord or the property owner has to have prior notice of the dog's what's called vicious propensities uh, before the landowner can be held responsible. Okay. And so what that means is you as the owner have to know that the dog has bitten so either bitten somebody before or you've seen the dog growl, bite, jump, snarl, act aggressive in any manner, chased after somebody, tried to bite somebody. Um, if you have actual notice of these things, you're now on notice and can be held liable if that dog bites somebody. If you've never seen any of that behavior, if you've never been told that that dog has ever bit anybody or acted aggressive towards anybody, the land and the property owner is not going to be held responsible. Yeah. Then there's also, you knew or you should have known. So let's say your tenant writes you a letter to your business address that you advise your tenants, they should, you know, communicate with you. And you don't, it's a PO box and you don't check it very often. And maybe they sent you a letter, hey, my neighbor's dog is constantly barking and jumping at me. I'm scared of my dog. It tried to attack my my chihuahua. You never check your mailbox. Well, that's on you. You should have known. Okay. Right. 
So the law, I mean, the easy one is the direct knowledge. Then there's the should have known. So basically what I always tell landlords and property owners is if you are going to rent to somebody with a dog, very first question is what kind of dog? If you don't want to see it with your own eyes, ask for a picture mm -hmm. and ask them straight out. Has the dog ever bitten anybody? Mm -hmm. Dog ever acted aggressive towards anybody? I always encourage landlords to actually see the dog if they're going to allow it in their rental property. See how the dog interacts with people because ultimately it's your responsibility. I personally, in my rentals, I don't allow dogs just because I don't want to deal with the liability. Um, the story that I'm going to tell you about, you know, really is a, a good example of why I don't allow dogs. Now, some people, and I'm an animal lover, but Me some too. people say I can get a much larger pool of potential applicants if I allow dogs. And my property's old, or I don't really care about the carpet, so the more the merrier. But the issue really is then you're exposed. Mm -hmm. So if you are going to allow pets, you want to make sure you know exactly, well, one, make sure you have good insurance, liability insurance. We went over that last time. We went over that last time. You have to have it. But okay. then it's not enough just to have insurance. Make sure that your insurance company doesn't exclude certain breeds. So in the fine print that nobody ever reads in their insurance policy, for pets, they might say there's a specific exclusion, meaning we won't cover liability for things like a pit bull or a German Shepherd or an Akita, certain brands that are known to be, oh, excuse me, breeds, not brands, certain breeds that are known to be more aggressive. So that makes your insurance policy void. Oh, in Jesus. Yeah, so you definitely want to make sure you read that. Know for sure. Some insurance companies don't care and it's not an issue, but your insurance company might. So mm -hmm. make sure you go through that policy line by line and know what it says. Wow. That's part of my consulting you know, business and same thing with yours. I mean, I'm happy to review insurance policies or contracts or agreements for people if, if yeah. they are unsure. But yeah. Um, so the other thing you can do is in addition to your own policy, if you're going to allow it, you can require the tenant to get their own renter's insurance liability policy to protect for their dog. Mm -hmm. That then takes the burden off the property owner. Wow. You know, I, I'm a pit bull lover, yeah. <clears throat> but I guess. I don't and that's allow okay. I mean, the, the, there's many pit bulls out there that are the biggest mush loving dogs. <laughs> And that, but so the the history though of that breed though is is that they're unpredictable, and um, you know a lot of insurance companies just don't want that liability. That's not to say that you can't find an insurance company that won't give you insurance. I'm sure there are. You just Maybe. might have to pay a little bit more money for it. So they do. So wow. I mean, people don't think about this stuff when they're just say people wake up one day and they say, I want a dog. Yeah. They don't think okay, about now it. watch this. You don't tell your insurance agent that you got a dog. Then you're on Facebook posting pictures of your great, cute little new pit bull. <laughs> and your insurance agent or the insurance companies will then use that photo against you to say, you didn't put us on notice that you've added a pet to your policy. Oh, my Lord. Added a pet to your home, and we're excluding coverage if there's an attack. And I mean, I've had an insurance com an insurance okay. agent say that exactly to me. I she said she stalks her clients on Facebook, and then <laughs> help them though. She'll message them and say, "You better make sure I add this to your policy. Is that okay?" You know, she's doing it from a, you know trying to protect her clients, but gotcha. most people don't think about that. I wouldn't think about it. Or it's like when you install that trampoline in your backyard mm -hmm. and you tell your insurance company. <laughs> and you post pictures of your kids having fun on the trampoline uh -huh. on Instagram or Facebook, uh -huh. your insurance company is going to see those pictures. And if you didn't notify them of these, they call them hazards on your property, they could exclude coverage. <sighs> oh, wow. Well, I am learning so much, <laughs> Jessica. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
I um, love it. I do. I love helping people. <laughs> um, so in this particular case, one of my past clients um, owns a beautiful uh, piece of property, you know, five acres farm type land, and he has multiple dwellings on the property. Okay. And um, he rents it out. So there's multiple apartments on this piece of property. Multiple apartments and multiple um, residents. Right. Right. So there's three different dwellings where people can live. Now, he first of all, they moved in. He has a no, no dogs rule. Okay. He didn't know they had dogs. So the two tenants, they both have dogs. One has a puppy, a German Shepherd. And one had, I think it was like a golden retriever or something, very docile type of dog, an older dog. So mm -hmm. landlord very rarely goes to the property. Rent is paid at his office or through the mail or electronically. The tenants maintain the lawn and the snow. Um, you know, he really would only go to the property if they had a maintenance complaint. Mm -hmm. um, and so what happens is tenant A, is out with her dog, not on a leash, the German Shepherd. Tenant B is out on her lawn with her dog, not on a leash. Oh boy, that's a recipe. And for they're really far apart. I mean, easily a mile between oh, wow. two okay. houses, okay? Okay. Um, the German Shepherd is like, you know, just outside playing and catches an eye towards the Golden Retriever. Way down way far away okay. german shepherd is in heat and takes off after <laughs> the golden retriever oh, no. i mean full speed ahead mm -hmm. unstoppable a, basically it's unstoppable like, so yeah. you have tenant a running after her german shepherd trying to get him to stop yelling 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 won't stop mm -hmm. and it b sees this german shepherd running towards her and the dog and she tries to get in between the two, she, the dog ends up nipping, the German Shepherd bites the Golden Retriever in the leg. Okay. Okay. She tries to f basically break up this dog fight. I don't want to use a fight, but you know, and she gets uh, the German Shepherd basically lets go of the Golden Retriever, turns around and just basically bites her right in the face with enough force to break her eye socket. Mm -hmm and cut her lip and her nose and she needed plastic surgery to repair them now just so i'm getting a little twisted about the owner who owns what dog bring me up to speed on so, I, so it, I mean it really doesn't matter basically one tenant owns the german shepherd one tenant owns the golden retriever they both live on the property landlord doesn't know about the dogs and very rarely goes to the property yeah but i'm trying to figure out <clears throat> two owners Yes. The owner, the aggressive dog owner got bitten or the. Oh, sorry. No. Prey, the predator. So the, the German shepherd dog owner and then the golden retriever, the golden retriever owner is uh -huh. the one who got bit. Gotcha. So she's innocent. She's innocent. Okay. Right. All right. So instead of suing tenant A, the German shepherd owner, her neighbor, they sued the landlord, thinking he's got this big insurance policy, he might. and um, you know he'll have to pay for it. Now, under normal circumstances, the insurance company is going to have their own lawyer. Property <laughs> owner will have to pay no money. Insurance company will defend the property owner based on his policy on his policy he won't have to spend any money in this particular case property owner is mistaken about the type of coverage he has oh wow insurance so okay insurance coverage is not going to protect him why would he not be mistaken why wouldn't he know why would he know what he has not everybody pays attention to what they have is that this based is on what I'm saying to you when we first started? Make sure you know exactly what kind of coverage you have in your policy and make sure that things are not excluded. Exclusions. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. So he thought he had liability coverage. He only had property damage coverage. Property damage. Gotcha. Meaning, like, if the building caught on fire or flooded, 
Wow. Okay. No liability coverage of any kind. Mm -hmm. That is, you know, from our perspective, from lawsuit perspective, devastating. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll say this. He's done nothing wrong. He's had no notice that there's an aggressive dog. He's not aware of any dog bite. He has no responsibility in this case. However, because he didn't have liability insurance, he needed to hire me to defend him. So now I had to file an answer to the lawsuit. Which ain't cheap. I mean, that's basically, that's where you start cranking, right? Yeah, it's and hourly. Answers are, oh my goodness. Oh, yeah. so explain for our viewers yes. who may not know what an answer is. Right. So when you f bring a lawsuit, you file what's called a complaint in court. Now to file the complaint, it costs 200 bucks. Anybody can file a complaint whether they have a valid lawsuit or not. And uh, in New York, anyway, you don't get punished for bringing a frivolous lawsuit. So they will we'll just file the $200 fee and hope for the best. Um, you know, so now I have to file a legal document that says he had no prior notice. He was not present that day. He was not involved. And the case should be dismissed against him. Gotcha. So that in and of itself is going to be at expense for the owner. Yeah. And so you got to figure between three and four hundred dollars an hour. Most lawyers charge. I lost you, Jessica, yeah. in your video. He froze for a second. How about now? OK, yeah, gotcha. So, yeah, most law firms are going to charge you between three and four, three and four hundred dollars an hour. Yeah. Right. So I had to do an answer. I had to go to court. And I had to have conference with the uh, attorney. Oh, wow. Now, we can't come to an agreement. I said, I'm not offering a penny. He did nothing wrong, and you're not getting any money from us. Mm -hmm. So now, I did a formal motion to dismiss. Okay. Court. It's called a summary judgment motion. And basically, it's more paperwork. I get an affidavit, a sworn statement from the property owner that says, I've never been told that this dog is aggressive. I've never seen it be aggressive. I didn't even know it was on the property. Nobody ever told me, nobody ever complained. And wow. the, um, the owner, I mean, you know, the, the injured tenant never put in her papers that the property owner would ever have reason to know. So I filed this motion to dismiss the charges. Like say for, so for instance, you're saying her lease didn't say there's a dog on the premises. Right. Well, that's a separate issue. He doesn't use leases. He just does month to month. But we'll get to that. Yeah, that's yeah we'll get to that. That's a separate topic. But anyway, the judge saw that's more money. So now I have to take the time to do the motion and the court appearance associated with that. Mm -hmm. And the judge says, basically, you're, you know, you're probably right, but I'm not going to dismiss it without depositions. Now, what depositions are, it's basically an out-of-court proceeding where the injured person and their lawyer and my client and I sit down in a room with a stenographer and we take sworn testimony. I love depositions, man. I love them. It's like, what you, I hate it because they, they're like, were you lying then or were you lying now? It's yeah. Like, once you record them, Jessica, tell it for our yeah. viewers. Oh, that that's my favorite man. part. <laughs> are you, do you depose people? Yeah. Oh, I love it. I I do. That's, that's my favorite part. I depositions and trials. I do. I love it. Oh, and if they're going to lie about, and most people will lie about the most ridiculous thing that go. they shouldn't lie about. And then you just get them caught up in everything. So it's fun. Yeah, oh, no. it's fun. Um, but I'll say this. So now that, those depositions take hours, right? For, for people that don't know what a deposition is, Jessica, tell us real quick. For the lawyer to question the injured person. And in my case, so I questioned the injured person and um, the, her lawyer questioned my client. And we asked questions like, I asked questions like, have you ever seen this German Shepherd act aggressive? Have you ever seen this German Shepherd bite, growl, snarl, jump? Uh, and she said no to all those questions. Have you ever reported to your landlord you were concerned about the German Shepherd? No. Have you ever told anybody you were concerned about the German Shepherd? No. And she said, it always seemed like a friendly, happy puppy. Mm -hmm. 
She had walked past it many times and was never concerned. Um, the, her, the injured person's attorney asked my client, did you, were you aware about any aggressive behavior? No. Have you ever seen the dog act aggressive? No. After probably four or five hours, oh, wow. at, you know, $400 an hour. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. We finished those proceedings. And then I now file another motion to dismiss. Are you, are, you depo are you deposing both dog owners and the landlord and the owner, the, the landlord too? Yes. Wow, Jessica, five hours. Um, okay, go ahead. Okay. So now the next step is I file a motion to dismiss again with the depositions attached. Mm. Now he will win. He will get the motion dismissed. How the claim against him dismissed. However, we're now up to about five thousand dollars in legal bills. Oh my goodness! Right? Think about how much liability insurance policy is. Right? Fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars, maybe for that big piece of property. For a year, yeah. You know, already up to five thousand, and you know, I feel I do. I feel compassion for him. Well, not only that, the stress, Jessica. I mean, the money is one thing, but I'm like, is he sleeping at night? Yeah, he's is stressed. he sleeping at it night? Is. You know, and it's you know, it's just not fair. It really isn't fair. He did nothing wrong, mm -hmm. um, but that's what people do today. They always sue the property owner, regardless of what happens, thinking that they have the deep pocket. Yeah. And now that now that the the injured person knows this motion to dismiss is coming. He's like, hey, can we settle for, you know, X amount of dollars to make it, you know, it's like to save him the expense of filing that motion. Mm -hmm. How about you just pay me a couple of bucks? So now I have to say to my client, it's a cost benefit, right? Either you pay her a couple hundred dollars or you pay me to file the motion to dismiss and get it dismissed. But isn't he admitting guilt if he pays the... It's not an admission of guilt, but it is a settlement. And it goes in the court system as, an, as a settlement. Yeah, that's something. Now, it's almost like, not to compare, truthfully, but it's like when defendants have to decide, do they plead guilty to something they didn't do because the deal is really good? Oh, you know, it's almost like this terrible thing. You have to now sit down with your client and say, look, I know you've done nothing wrong, but if you, for some reason, lose this motion, you know, the, the offer to settle is really good. And hmm. so he and I will sit down and have to have that conversation. That's the conversation you haven't had yet. We have not had that conversation yet. Mm -hmm. But this is my frustration for property owners, myself included because you think you're doing everything right and you think you have all these protections in place and someone can come along and sue you and you have to defend it and pay for that defense. So that's why personally I don't let dogs in my home, but even if I don't, let's say I don't, I say I could be, that could have been me. I could have said no dogs. Yeah. Like, I have a dog. I'd have no idea. You don't even know what you, you know, people bring stuff in all the time. Next thing you know, you're driving by, there's a dog in the backyard. So that's the thing. It's just be proactive. You know, make sure you either yourself or your property manager is occasionally driving by and look at who's living there. And are there any animals there? I mean, it's not just a dog. I mean, in especially in Dutchess County, there are some rural farm areas and you can find people with horses goats, you know, different animals. And if they cause damage to their neighbor's property or get out and hurt somebody, you know, huh. there's potential liability. Okay. So let's get to what he could have done. We're about 25 minutes in. Uh, let's talk about negligence. Is not knowing being negligent? Is, is not knowing what's going on in your property negligent? No. No. So it, with regard to, well, I'll say this, in some cases it could be, but we're, we're discussing dog bites and animal bites, you know. Okay. That particular situation, the law says, for you to be responsible for an animal attack, you have to have notice that there were prior vicious propensities of this animal. Vicious propensities. So if you, let's say you know, you know your tenant has a dog, 
and it's an 11 pound little cute dog and you've never seen it act aggressive you, nobody's ever told you it bit anybody you're fine you're fine gotcha. Gotcha. you know if you allow an animal to stay on your property that you know has bitten somebody else mm -hmm. then then you're exposed to it so i said to my client look you're on notice now this dog has bitten somebody if it happens again you will be held liable for a lot of money okay you're talking about you're in you're in notice as of today like yes. forward yes mm. right so you almost like call almost like one bite free okay <laughs> Even for the dog owner once you know that that dog has bit somebody or uh, that you're liable for anything that dog does does that matter the breed i mean say you got a little chihuahua no. around in here doesn't matter oh wow yeah. Have you ever seen a dog walking down the street with like a muzzle like guard? Mm -hmm. yep. Some, sometimes that's the compromise. The you'll be required if you're outside to have it muzzled or on a leash or different things. Wow. But you're still potentially liable if the dog bites somebody. Oh, unbelievable. Okay. So what are some of the things he could have done? And then we'll get to questions, Jessica. So I think that he did everything right in terms of uh the conversations that he had he screened his tenants he asked okay. about dogs but for him it really was he what what he and what everybody needs to do is be very clear on understanding what kind of liability insurance you have when it comes to animals what policy what, yes. po what your policy will yes. or will not allow and if, yes and if you <laughs> say i don't allow dogs make sure your policy covers animal even if you're not allowing a dog there if a dog bite occurs on your property make sure you have coverage for that okay now why didn't the 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 let's say the bitee go after the dog owner why I, and, you know, off the hook it's so frustrating i mean it technically she did she did she sued she later brought in the the um she sued the German Shepherd owner, but the reality is that person has no money, so she's not going to get money from anybody. Wow! So who was going to have to pay for her surgery, Jessica? Her? Well, she has. I mean, look. Here's the reality: the German Shepherd owner is going to have to pay her. It just may be that she gets a judgment or a payment plan or something. Oh, wow! The German Shepherd owner is going to be held responsible. Yeah. But that has nothing to do with my client i got you i got you. yeah well i mean just for our training today well, let's you know? say your own personal dog right if your personal dog bites somebody forget it you know you're going to be held responsible because your dog injured somebody yeah. which is different than i'm talking about a landlord mm, i see i see so, so the first thing you should have done was verify what his what his insurance policies may or may not cover regarding yes. animals yes Anything else you could yeah. have done? Um, Other than doing inspections, I don't know, once a year. I like to know because for me, yeah. since 2004, I'm here to tell you, people say they don't have pets, Jessica. Well, in my experience, yeah, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Right. right. Or maybe they get a dog halfway through the lease and just yeah. forget. I mean, it could really be innocent that yeah. they just forget to tell their landlord or they think who doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I'm with you. I think that... I say, like, I offered to change the batteries and the smoke detectors. Oh, I like that. That I can come in and see what's going on in the house. Or maybe the air filters for the central heating and air. Yeah. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah. So good. find a reason at some point to be in the house and see what's going on. Yeah. Or I, you know, it's very simple to just drive by. See, is there a leash outside, a water dish by the back door? Mm -hmm. I realize that there are a lot of people that invest in properties where they don't live. And that's a, fine. That's a totally different topic. I personally only invest where I live because I want, it's, I want to have more control over what's going on on my properties. That's why I value your opinion so much, Jessica. Not only are you an attorney, but also a real estate investor. Yeah. Yes. I do. Uh, so is there anything else that we need to tell them what he could have done or are we good with that? Um, I think we're good with that. I mean, I would say this, the, the most important thing is be aware of your insurance coverage, whether or not you're aware of the dog or not. 
Okay. And make sure you know what your policy covers. Gotcha. Gotcha. And if you don't allow pets, make sure you still have liability coverage for dog bites on your property. Liability even if you don't coverage. allow pets. Make You're sure talking about that liability coverage. Doesn't it usually come with your hazard insurance? I would say this. Everybody thinks so, but you need to make sure that it does. I don't know. I, I'm glad That's you're all. talking about this. It's very possible that every insurance policy has it. But I know from speaking to people and from clients, they there are policies that don't have dog bite coverage. It's excluded. 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 Right? And I they mean, exclude things like a trampoline, a dog bite. There's all kinds of little things that they will exclu exclude in the fine print. Gotcha. Gotcha. That you may so, or may not even know. So Jessica, we, the policies are not the thinnest things in the world right. to read. How do we go? Do we just call our insurance? Do we have specific questions or do we need to sit down and take the time to read this thing word for word? I mean, who the hell does it? Um, well, as an attorney, I'm recommending I you either that. sit down and read it word for word or ask your attorney to look through it. I mean, okay. what charge you for a half hour to read a document. I mean, really, it's not going to be much. Gotcha. As we've talked about, every real estate investor, no matter how big or small, should have a local attorney that deals specifically with investment properties. Gotcha. Not just closings, not just evictions, but, but specifically investment properties so they know how to protect landlords. Mm. Right? So that's like what I do. I focus on protecting landlords. I don't do real estate closings. There's a ton of attorneys that do real estate closings. They're, they're very cheap and that's all they do. Mm. I personally don't do closings. Let somebody else do that. I'm more on the litigation protection side of things. Um, and so there's plenty of attorneys out there that do what I do. And so you can either use me and I'm happy to look through it and read it. It'd be a nominal fee basically to read a document. And you know, I can help anybody in state or out of state with that. Gotcha. Yeah. If you're, you know, if you have something specific to your state, then you're going to want a local attorney. Okay. Well, um, insurance policy isn't going to be specific to the state, right? You can help our viewers right. with, with that. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And then the other thing too, is like, I mean, I always say to my insurance agent, is there anything I need to know? What, what are the <laughs> important part? And they will usually point me to the direction of, you know, hey, make sure you're aware of this, this, or that. And then part of it is choosing. Do you want extra coverage for this? Or she'll say, I mean, you don't have a trampoline, right? You don't have a dog, right? And, you know, we'll discuss what I have so that I can add extra coverage if I have those things. Or I wanted coverage for the main sewer line on my rental property. Yeah. So the, the pipe between the house and the town water supply is typically not covered by an insurance policy. Okay. Because I wanted that, I had she had to take me out of my current policy and put me in a different company that does cover it. Yes. Sir. So unless yeah. I talk to her about that, she would know. So chit chat with your insurance agent, mm -hmm. and now all the viewers know. Do I have dog coverage? <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna check tomorrow. Right? And um. Yeah, so I would say that's that's one of the most most important. Uh, okay, well, let's get to our Q and A. Yes, let's do it, Jessica. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, my brother's on here today. Wow, two time. Nice. How do you find subject? We're not doing subject two today. Valma doesn't allow dogs either. What's a realist? The cracking down. What if you have insurance and have signs posted and someone still, 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 Daniel Baird says, what if you have insurance and you have signs posted, I'm presuming beware of dog maybe? Yeah. And someone still gets bit. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, well, I'm, I'm not necessarily sure I understand the question. Are you talking about as a property owner, are you responsible if you put beware of dog? We'll come back to that one, Daniel. Go ahead and she wants to know if you're talking about the property owner or the tenant have the beware of dog do you, are you should you put beware of dog it, i mean do you put those signs up jessica i mean you can put them up because it's supposed to be a deterrent for people okay. trespassing or breaking in 
it doesn't at the end of the day as long as you have no notice that that dog has ever been vicious before mm -hmm. you're not going to be held responsible i mean okay. you might have to testify at a deposition that you only stuck that sign up as a home security measure gotcha I, mean, I could stick up a sign like that whether or not i have a dog in my house i see i see some people uh, use those signs as a home security device. I see. Gotcha. Crack it down. What if you have experience sign posters? Okay, Ray G wants to know, Jessica, if someone if someone wants to get in contact with you, would you like to give us some either a phone number or an or an email that people can contact you? Absolutely, absolutely. So my website is actually under construction. I'm very excited. I'm finally getting my website together. Oh, um, my personal email I give out is J. Z as in zebra, Siegel, S E G A L. So J Z Siegel at gmail.com. Shoot right. me an email and then we'll get back and forth and in, in touch with each other. I'm going to put it here for people to J Z Z Siegel at G. You said at gmail? Yeah, gmail.com. Or actually, Chris, you can give out my JME properties uh, email that you have. I was gonna say I don't have that one. I'm yeah, that's, that's fine. That's what I use for more my law career. Okay. Uh, so why don't we just do the JME Properties LLC at gmail.com? That one's an uh, easy one. JME Properties LLC. LLC. Yeah. I'm standing here. My whole view and vantage point and outlook of animals. I'm looking outside. People walking their dogs. I'm like, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> listen, let me say this. I mean. The companion animals are wonderful. They're healthy for you. They reduce your blood pressure. They're mm -hmm. great. Don't let it stop you. I mean, I say this people mm -hmm. sue no matter what. We live in a world where people just sue for no reason or any reason. Yeah. You can't let it stop you from living your life, but you can have a good lawyer on your side and then you're okay. All right, cool. If the dog has been trained, Oh, hold on a sec. Okay. Daniel Baird, if, if the dog has been trained like through a pet smart, is that taken into consideration regarding the case? If the dog yeah. has some type of training, Jessica? Yeah, it would. I mean, it, it under certain circumstances, it certainly might. Um, it would be proof that the dog is not aggressive. If you show it's had training and it 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 went to puppy school and it follows my commands and i've never seen it jump bark growl it's it's excellent behavior that will be just more proof in your corner gotcha gotcha yes. let me pull this thing okay next question is I'll put that uh boy oh my goodness they are coming in jessica what <laughs> <laughs> They're trained. Oh. oh, we froze again. Uh, I'm not reading anything. Okay. Contact information. I'll save insurance. Uh, I mean, do insurance companies take the, Oh, he's talking. They're talking amongst you. Chris, after someone is sued, Daniel Baird says, after someone is sued, a landlord, is there a file that sticks with them later on, like a driver, like a driving record, perhaps, or is it sealed? Okay, so what? Yeah, I guess the answer is if there's been court action, the court records are public documents. So you can go into the county that the house is in, the clerk county clerk records, and you can search by property owner name for any lawsuits ever filed against that property owner. Okay, and you can look by his personal name if. If you're unsure who actually owns the property, you can do also on the county website, the property search, put in the address and the county records will show you the actual owner of the property because sometimes we put things in an LLC or a business name. Mm -hmm. And so when you search for court records, search under the owner's name and business name, and yes. then it'll show you if there's ever been any lawsuits or settlements. That's going to show any activity, period. And it just any what you, court filed activity. Even if you just file something. Yes. Even if you went, if you went, if you came after somebody and lost, it's still going to show that someone. Right. It'll show that it had been dismissed or settled or gotcha. trial verdict or whatever. Gotcha. Now that's that's on a county level. 
you can also check in like the local town or village court if there's ever been a claim against the property in small claims court or things gotcha. like that. Now, Daniel wants to know, is this, since the lady came after, I guess, the deepest pockets, he wants to know, would this be defamation if, if they lost? I mean, could it be defamation? He wants to know, could this lawsuit be, could it be a countersuit for defamation? Um, he would have to prove that his reputation was actually damaged. Yeah. And you have to show a malicious intent for the lie. And, um... I don't know that that would be proven here. Yeah, not that one. I have so Dragon Eye Sock is ripped out. Tenant sprung two puppies on me. Oh my goodness. So somebody, <laughs> somebody, <laughs> somebody has two pit bull puppies. Alabama real estate. Oh my Lord. You better be watching this, brother. Yeah. Two pit bull puppies, huh? Good luck to you. Are there any so legal what you can do once the tenant's already in? You can say either you have to get rid of the dog. Mm -hmm. dogs, or two, you have to get your own liability insurance policy on these two dogs and you have to provide me proof of that policy within 10 days or, you know, whatever you want to do, seven days, whatever. whatever. Now, I mean, even like Geico auto insurance, I didn't know this, like they do a lot of renter's insurance. Mm -hmm. It's cheap. It's like a hundred bucks for a policy. For the year. So you put it on or some landlords that i know from my investment group they will actually pay for the policy but they make the tenant get it in their name that's pretty cool and for lawsuit purposes it's the renter's insurance that gets brought into the lawsuit not the homeowner that way you know it's done it's, that way you know it's done yeah okay let's move on down here ronnie haskins my brother hey brother <laughs> what, if, what if you have property a uh, property management company? Do they shield you from the liability? Marty wants That's an excellent question. So if you have a property manager, you want to make sure that there is what's called an indemnification clause in there. Indemnification. indemnification. And what that means is the property management company will protect you in the event that you get sued because they didn't do their job. Mm. So it depends on the kind of agreement that you have between your property management company and yourself. If you say to your property manager, I don't want a dog, or if you allow a dog, I require renter's insurance, and they don't do what you say, they can be held responsible as long as it says in the agreement that they'll be held responsible. I'm doing it. Oh, wow, nice. That's a good question, Ronnie. Thank you. Okay, 510 HSV. My friend's tenant got a pit bull. Oh, well, they're in trouble. But the insurance company threatened to cancel the policy, so they got the dog out. Is that common? Um, yes, unfortunately. I don't know. Yeah, I'm done with pit. I love pit. I'm a pit bull lover, but it's just too much of a headache. Uh, the lease says no pets. Okay. He could have made a relationship. Paid it. Man, okay. Damn. I'm going to get a few. Ronnie, does having an um this is from Ronnie Haskins. Does having an umbrella policy help with these types of cases? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, that's really what the umbrella policy is for. It's for extra coverage for a very serious injury. Mm -hmm. But again, just make sure that you have it covers dog bites. Gotcha. No one cares about your property more than you. You're right, Daniel. That is my quote. That's my. No one cares about your stuff more than you. Nobody. <clears throat> all the time to people. Mm -hmm. Dang, a realist, realist. I would read every single sentence and word syllable more than once. So I have a lawyer do it. Yeah. yeah. What we got here? Almost done. Oh wow. They're coming in, Jessica. If I allow a minus menu two menu twos, if I allow a dog, do I need to get liability insurance as a landlord? Yes. Right, so it's one of two ways. Either you have your basic liability policy on the house that I hope you have, and that's gonna cover anything. Somebody slips and falls, somebody hurts themselves, if there's a fire, any of those things, and if there's a dog attack. Yes. So you can want that basic insurance coverage. Well, you can require your tenant to get it as well if you want. But you, you know, unless you really facilitate that or require that they show you proof, mm -hmm. 
you know, you're still on the hook. So That's if cool. you allow dogs i would encourage i would require the tenant to get their own liability coverage yeah i mean it's like but the problem is i, I think people are like well i'm thinking in my head that's more interfacing with ten interaction with tenants right people don't want to do that and right. then they pe tenants feel like you're making them do something but i so think that's you know that somebody i know what they do is um like i said they secure the policy yeah and what, they do what's called like a non-refundable pet deposit Nice. So, and it's really covering the rental policy, but they, you know, they, they think that it's because most people expect a pet deposit of some kind. Most good pet owners. Yeah. Good pet owners. Don't mind paying it actually. Right. So there's all kinds of creative ways to set it up. Daniel says, what if the person is a police officer or someone that has special needs? What can we tell insurance company for that type of coverage? I'm presuming somebody that need that needs the dog right. for sure, like a support animal or absolutely. You can't, you you know, if somebody if you decide to rent to somebody who has a special need and has the companion animal or a canine officer or something like that, yeah. you are you're on notice and you're allowing the dog to stay, and it's no different. There has to be coverage for it. Still coverage. Okay, got that, Daniel. For your policy or the rent or the renter's policy. Gotcha. My, Bob Barbara Rocha Rocha Shevers. My dog is an emotional support animal. We just talked. Wow. Yes. Therefore, net. Therefore, no pet policy. No pet policy doesn't allow. I feel right. like. So this is what I'll say to that. As a landlord, you can decide not to rent to that person. We get oh, to wow. choose who we want to rent to. Right. No requirement that you rent to her. If you rent to her with the understanding that you look you may typically have a no pets policy and you say this woman is going to be the best tenant <coughs> i want her she's going to pay her rent she's going to keep my place clean and you make that special agreement with her that's totally fine but you're still going to be held liable if that dog attacks somebody and you knew it had vicious propensities well, now good. most people are not aware of that so you're going to be fine mm. She says, therefore, no pet policy doesn't. I don't know that. I feel like our landlord is going to kick us out because this month, because month to month leaves. Uh, uh, Barbara, I think you've got a legitimate question about, but I'm not understanding. You said you have a support animal, therefore, no pet policy doesn't allow. I'm not. I'm not understanding you. I think she's trying to say that the typical no pet policy doesn't apply to her. Oh, okay. Right? I thought, okay. And, and that, that is. That, that would be true. However, a landlord always has the discretion of picking their tenant. So mm -hmm. if you have a no pet policy and you decide you want to rent to her, you have to rent to her knowing she comes with a dog. Okay, so we're not discriminating based on the pet. I mean, the pet it doesn't fall under the discrimination. Right. Mm. Well, Barbara, you're hearing it from an attorney, so. I bet it's illegal for insurance companies to not cover service animals. Yeah, I don't know. Right. I'm sure they they have to be very careful about that. Gotta go change. <laughs> There's gonna be an insurance company out there that will insure for pets. I mean, every there's a dog in almost every home. There are insurance companies that I don't want to give the impression that they're always excluded. They're not. I'm just suggesting that you make sure you know what your policy says. That's yeah. all. Yeah, Daniel was telling me that they uh, Geico charged him $99 for the year for his dog in his apartment. And he said he told him it was a pit bull. That's a pretty good one, Daniel. Okay. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's what I expect. Most people say it's about $100. That's great. He's very smart. Oh, yeah, guys. Quality child care. Thank you. Yes, please, y'all, give me a thumbs up and help our channel get up to the top so we can help raise the fund. Jessica, you are raising my financial literacy. Seriously. Guys, Thank you. please give us a thumbs up here. We are only discussing litigation. Uh, are we only discussing litigation? No, I like Well, Jessica, you are a litigation attorney. So, right. So, I mean, my, I'll say this, what I typically do in New York is I'm a consultant for landlords. So I try and educate landlords. I do a small fee and we sit down and we could do it by video on the phone or whatever. And we go over how many properties you have or what's your situation. And I give advice 
to make sure you have proper coverage. I try and educate people so that they don't get sued. Yeah. I spend a lot of time doing that more than actually the litigation part. If you're set up with proper tenant screening and good insurance coverage and a good business formation, you hopefully avoid the need to litigate. Gotcha. So yes, absolutely. I, I defend landlords all the time mm. and you, um, you know, when you have to go to court, wow. that, that litigation practice is limited to New York cause that's where I'm licensed. But my consulting, I could do anywhere. Nice. Where give me a call and I'm happy to um, work out some sort of arrangement, fee arrangement. I try and make it affordable. I think it's so knowledge is power. Good for you. And Jessica, uh, let's okay, that's all the questions that we have. Jessica for our viewers is she is an editor for our newsletter that comes out every month. And this month I hope we can share some details. Yes. about this case for the newsletter perhaps yeah i definitely do that and then nice. if anybody wants to email me a topic they would like to hear me talk about or write about i'm always yeah. open for ideas so nice. the jme properties llc at gmail is a great way to contact me it's right in the drop box there too okay. excellent so, last question sarah shell wants to know how long did that court case take jessica how long did it how long did it take um we're about um probably eight or nine months in good lord have mercy yeah justice system is very very slow <laughs> the wheels of justice grind yeah. slow yes grind slow. i have to say thankfully for the young lady her she's healed really nicely praise god yeah. praise god okay guys if this information has helped you at all make sure you take a few moments to subscribe to our channel here <laughs> I love that. This thing weighs a ton, but it works. Yeah. We're all just about at 10,000 subscribers now. <clears throat> That's awesome. Yeah, we're going to be bringing more training with Jess. With Jess. Come on in, guys. More training with Jessica in the near future. And like the content, share with any other real estate investor or property owner you might know, someone that can use this knowledge to uplift their financial literacy. Jessica, yeah. what are your final words for our viewers? And we're out of here uh final words enjoy your family have a positive outlook and protect your assets yeah protect your assets that's right i always say prevention before yeah prevention before okay have Jessica. a good night everybody it was great thank you yeah. talk to you soon all right bye